Well guys, there's been a lot of changes in my small space garden and I can't wait to show them to you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Shamira Benson, one part of Team Benson, and today it is Sunday. It is a beautiful morning to do a garden tour, so we are going to do one. So let's go up to the front here. If you guys have not been watching my channel or if you're new to my channel, one thank you to all of our new subscribers. Yes, we are getting close to that 20K mark. I think we still need like 700 people, which feels like a lot. But when you think about it, we did, I, when I started this channel, I literally only had like me and like three of my friends. So I am very, very excited and very, very grateful and thankful for all of you guys that have subscribed and shared and liked and commented and just helped me grow my channel. So our garden is starting to grow. It's starting to become fall slowly, but surely we are still in the nineties and we'll be in the nineties for the next two days, but the nighttime temperatures have cooled down and the regular temperatures will be cooling down too. So let me show you guys what I have in the garden. We are getting close to not needing this shade cloth in another two days, we won't need it. So let's just see what we got underneath it. So we are starting up front here in my cascading Vago garden beds. And look at this guys, all hope has been restored because we have a ton of garlic that is popping up. Now this whole side of the bed is the garlic that my friend gave me and as you can see it is slowly but surely starting to pop up. And then these last little ones are garlic that was sprouting on my countertop. I decided, you know what, we have some space in this bed so I'm going to split it apart and bury it and see what happens. And that's what happened, it popped up. So yay, lucky me. So hopefully the rest of the garlic all pops up. I can even see like some like right there starting to pop up. And hopefully we get a ton of garlic this season. If some more pops up or some more starts to sprout in my kitchen, look at that guys. I'm so excited about that. I'm going to probably plant it right there because that's where I think that when it got dig up, dug up, I think it actually ate that part of the garlic. Now down below here we have rosemary, we have some curly parsley, which is our favorite. We have some garlic chives, some lemon thyme, which smells amazing. We have some sage right here. We have some dill that will be happier once these temperatures cool. And then we have some German thyme right there. Our peppermint is not loving anything about right now, so hopefully that grows back. Our moringa tree is doing nicely. I gave it a little stick to kind of lean up against because the uh, um, high winds just really, really put it through the ringer. And then right here in front, we also have a variegate, variegated oregano that is really spreading and filling out. Now, I am a firm believer that your herb bed should be close to your kitchen. And that is because if they are close, you'll cook with herbs. If you have to walk way far away to grab some rosemary or some thyme, you won't do it. You just won't do it. So put your herb bed as close to your kitchen as humanly possible. If you can, like if I had a kitchen window, I would be able to put them in there too. But put it close because using herbs in your cooking and getting away from those bottled seasonings that are packed with preservatives and all the other things is going to be amazing for your health. So this bed has seen the most progress in it. It is actually all filled in, like it's um, planted out, and I do have just some spinach and some onions that I'm hiding right there. I've decided that right below here, I'm gonna put the spinach right here in those pots. That's just some soil that I have that I'm gonna be filling all of my pots with. So starting over here, we have all of our collard greens right here. We then have some bok choy, bok choy, regular bok choy, and some purple pak choy, or red pak choy. And then we have some dinosaur kale right there. And then this is all of our spinach that still needs to be planted out, along with some lettuce that I'm hiding from the sun, and some purple cabbage. Purple cabbage could be planted out, but I just don't have this bed ready for it yet. And then some candy onions, those can be planted out, but I have to get their space ready too. And then we have some Chinese cabbage that is right here in the middle. I'm trying to make it to where this Chinese cabbage can grow pretty big. So I didn't want to put them too close together. So that's why there's more space here and more space there. I might fill it in with some radishes too, which is probably what I'm going to do sooner or later. 
We have a little kale that we're gonna see what happens with that. And then we have some squash, some summer squash. This one is a, I cannot say that, but that's what it's called. <laughs> it's a, also called a Mexican gray squash. We have that planted right there. Hopefully that grows because we've had horrible squash luck. And then we have some, um, some cucumbers. The same ones are over there. So we'll get the name of it because I forgot the name of it. But we're gonna try and grow those up this arch. Having my brassica bed built out and like filled in makes me so happy. Now it's a lot different from what I had last year because last year I was focusing on growing a ton, a ton of collard greens because I wanted to get a whole bunch in the freezer. And we did. We got an entire bunch in the freezer to where that's what we're working with, that's what we're cooking, and it's been nice. Like, and we still have a bunch of them in there too. So now I'm just using a lot of this for like fresh eating with the greens. So we can just come out here, grab a bunch of like you know kale or a bunch of bok choy or whatever and just do like a stir fry or something like that and then the next year I'll go back to planting a whole row and collard greens everywhere so that then I can fill the freezer again now we haven't made a ton of progress over here but we do have just our regulars our big nisi that one's an ichabob eggplant and then we have our new black beauty eggplant over there this one actually is three four plants in here so i think i'll narrow it down to just the three the three strongest ones but that one should fill in really nicely we have some julep mint right there that's new and then we have our chocolate mint that's over here both of those need some water now on this side, before we go out to the big area, we have some Carmen sweets here, here, and there. And then we have some yellow um, banana peppers, sweet banana peppers right there. And then we also have our bell peppers over here. We have yellow, red, and green. And then in front here, we have our basil that needs to be harvested. I think this is screaming for me to make a spaghetti just so I can trim it down a little bit. Now this is not gonna love the cooler temperatures as they come in. So I wanna make sure that before it sprouts, I at least get like some good, um, like either pesto made or something else. But we're gonna cover it, see if we can pull it through the winter. It should last for a while, but it's not gonna love these cooler temps. And then we have some a little Italian oregano right there that is starting to come back. So guys, here, I dug around to see if my potatoes survived. I didn't see any, so I think that I'm just gonna add a layer of compost here and plant the onions right here, as many as I can, and try and grow a tub of onions. Now back behind here, we're moving into our trees. We have our dwarf Mexican lime tree that is greatly appreciating these cooler temps. Like, it's, it's appreciating it because it did not like these last bits of sun frying its leaves so I probably need to trim this one up a little bit like all of these once they get like this I can trim them up typically I let the hornworm that lives on here sometimes and then it goes into a butterfly right there that one is a beautiful butterfly that it goes into um, it'll trim it back and then it'll leave some of these that then die some of these die some of these start sprouting new leaves like that so it kind of just depends on the plant and somehow it's a symbiotic relationship where, you know, the hornworms do it and make it better. And then I just trim off whatever needs to be trimmed off so that then it doesn't stab me when I walk by. And so we have Yuli over here. Yuli is our other namesake plant. So this one is a grapevine, which as soon as I can, I am going to get it in the ground on our land. But we still need water out there. Monday, guys, I'm doing the update. We have also the curry tree right here, which is loving life. It went through some stuff. So I need to cut off this branch right here, which I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do with the curry branch because I have another one in the house. And then we have our dwarf mulberry that doesn't look like a dwarf because it's giant, but it does grow dwarf fruit. But it's beautiful and it keeps a lot of the sun out of this window. So if you guys are new to my channel, I have a small space garden here in the city. I'm in Phoenix, Arizona, zone 9B. But I also have a homestead that we just purchased, 40 acres of land up north. It's still 9A, it's 9A is what it is. So we have both spaces, but the homestead, it is raw land and a lot of work. 
but we'll talk about that in another video. Now moving on out to my non-patio area, all of this area that I've been showing you guys is on this brick patio, so it is in pots, um, or we made a raised bed on that brick. But we have some spearmint right here, we have stevia right there, and another black beauty eggplant right there. Over here we have some indigo growing, so we can make some blue dye. And then we have some San Mar one San Marzano growing right there. This is where we're gonna be growing hopefully some more potatoes. I think I have some in the house that are sprouted that I can plant in here from last year's harvest. And we have some peppers that need to go into the ground and need some watering. I think these ones are, what are these? Oh, those are poblano peppers. And then we grew in the house some Roma tomatoes. I grew these in two little seed or three little seed pods or little like seed squares and then I separated them all out. I had enough also to share with some friends too and this is still what's left over that's going in my garden. We have those cucumbers that I was showing you guys earlier. They are a Suyo long cucumber so hopefully those grow real well and grow up this arch and give us some more cucumbers because I would like to make some pickles. And then moving on along here, we have our serrano pepper, which is starting to flower. Look at all these little baby serranos coming in here. That's going to be nice. And then we have our jalapeno pepper, which is also starting to flower, looking really nice. And then we have our giant Brooklyn. Look at that. More Brooklyn melons are ready. Ready for the composter because she feeds the worms, not us. Look even another one over there. If you guys are new to my channel, this is my Brooklyn melon, called Brooklyn melon because although this is a Jewish gardening channel, we did not follow the laws of the Torah and we got a mixed plant. That mix between a melon and my Armenian cucumber. So when I intended to grow my Armenian cucumber, I got this Brooklyn melon. It does not taste great. <laughs> well, it doesn't taste bad, but it doesn't taste amazing. So, but it grows really prolifically. So one of the things that we were doing with it is we were making tons and tons of compost with the Vago Kitchen um, composter and we're feeding our soil and feeding our worms because we have red wiggler composting worms here in the desert versus the normal earthworms. So they eat a lot. So now this is where my garden is a mess. If you guys have been watching my shorts, you'll know that I am building this garden bed out. I'm getting rid of all the broken pots in my garden. As you can see, like that one shredded and this one's all broken. So watch my shorts and you can see what I'm doing with this over here and that big bag of compost right there. But we have our lemongrass that we're getting ready to trim up because we're gonna start using all of these dead leaves for mulch. We have some mulberry spinach right there. Underneath here, we have all of our broccoli. It's just underneath these baskets because that's kind of protecting it from getting eaten by things. And then we have our um, butternut squash growing right there. That one died, but this one is surviving and it is doing quite well. And then lastly, over here in our medicinal bed, we have some chamomile. We have some evening primrose some cone flowers, which is an urchinacea. And then that one is a daisy. It's not gonna go over here, but it'll probably go in a pot somewhere over here just to add some flowers. So guys, that is the garden right now. It is probably maybe halfway filled in. Yes, during the peak of the season, which is fall for us, we have probably over 250 plants back here, especially when we start adding in the radishes and the beans and the beets and all those different things. All of that is getting planted in the garden. Usually we can try and drop seeds for the radishes, the beans, all that stuff. We have a hummingbird again, which my hummingbird feeders are empty. so it just gave me a dirty look <laughs> so after this video I will be filling that but anyways <laughs> we are starting to grow stuff and we're starting to get out of these hot temperatures so thank you God for that because it has been blistering heat but until next time grow yourselves a garden because even a small space can provide you with tons of food bye guys